very good evening and welcome once again to UBC News tonight. Today on the 7th of April 2024, my name is Sharon Chomdusha with Mohammed on sign language. We start off with the president who says that he has no issues with his longtime close ally Amaman Babazi, despite parting ways in the general elections of 2016. The president says that even if Babazi disagreed and contested against him in 2016 general elections, the work Ambabazi did for the country is immense. Mr. Museveni made the remarks as a chief guest at the Serena Hotel in Kampala as Mbabazi and wife Jacqueline celebrated 50 years in marriage. <laughs> Saturday evening was worth celebrating as John Patrick Amama Mbawaz and the wife Jacqueline remembered 50 years of marriage. The event held at Serena Hotel in Kampala attracted top government officials, both former and current family members and friends. President Museveni was the chief guest. He said he has no intrigue against Mbawazi. John Patrick Amama Mbawazi is a long-time ally of President Museveni starting way back in 1970s till 2016 general elections when Mbawazi contested against Museveni. Museveni being the chief guest as Mbawazi celebrates 50 years of marriage is what many young politicians of this generation cannot easily do. But Museven says he has no problems with Mbawazi. When we have some differences with the, some of the comrades, even Kategaya, even uh, uh, Mao Mbawazi, I cannot forget, yes, I, I can disagree with you now, but I cannot forget the, the contribution you made in the past. <laughs> we will make tomorrow. Even that area, we had differences at one point. But afterwards, I asked him, I said, I used to support East African integration. He said, yes, okay, you come and become Minister of East Africa. I'm not bothered about the differences because I'm sure of what I'm doing. The, what is crucial is what Africa needs, not who is this one, who is that one. No, the problem of Africa is not the who, the problem of Africa is the what. Museveni, in the company of his wife, the First Lady Janet Museveni, congratulated Mbawazi and Jacqueline and urged the young generation to learn from them. So therefore, I want to congratulate uh, Mbawazi and Jackie for building up a family, having children and now grandchildren in the context of, 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 of instability of the resistance struggle, being separated, going here, going there, but still, God blesses us with the family. So I want to congratulate them and praise God for it. Mbawazi, on his part, accepted that he disagreed with President Museveni, but says it was on principles of democracy, but no personal issues with President Museveni. Your attendance, Mr. President and First Lady, is a powerful reminder of our shared history and the bonds that, despite whatever differences there may be, continue to connect us in pursuit of a better event. And I will never falter on that. Jacqueline Mbawazi says although the marriage became enjoyable, it was hard at the beginning due to her husband's political career. That her mama and I are celebrating 50 years. I thank you, her mama, for accepting to live with me for 50 years. With all my perfect imperfections. Former Prime Minister Dr. Rugunda applauded the couples for standing together despite ups and downs in their marriage for 50 years. For assisting my brother Mama to be able to do difficult tasks, especially organizing against bad governments. 
the children and grandchildren, totaling to about 20 members, sang praises on Dembawazi and Jacqueline for being a loving and strict parents that saved them. Philip Aguta for UBC News in Kampala. Now runners today turned up to participate in the Kabaka's 69th birthday run. And this year's run, uh, this year's run, obviously with the Kabaka Ronald Mwendam Tebi, he decided to designate Nalinya Agnes Nabaloga to flag off the runners. The 2024 Kabaka run Kawaka birthday run was on the theme men against HIV and AIDS to save the girl child. Kabaka has directed people to continue preventing the spread of HIV and AIDS to achieve the target of kicking out AIDS in Uganda by 2030. Mengo Palace has painted red color as runners wearing red birthday kits gathered for the 69th Kabaka birthday run towards 6.30 a.m. Katikir of Buganda, Charles Peter Maiga arrived. A few minutes later, Nalinya Agnes Navaroga, whom the Kabaka has designated to flag off the runners, together with Prince Semakokiro and Princess Katrina Sangaliambago, also arrived. She delivered Kabaka's message. His Majesty valued the subjects for participating in the run. <laughs> Kavaka has directed the public to avoid waste through which HIV AIDS is spread and do regular tests. HIV patients follow medical regulations to achieve the 2030 target. <laughs> This year's Kabaka birthday run was on the theme Men Against HIV to Save the Girl Child. Nalinya Navaloga flagged off the runners in three phases of 21, 10 and 5 kilometers. Katikiro Charles Peter Maiga urged runners to listen and respect the voice from the kingdom on the fight against HIV AIDS. <laughs> The lead of opposition in parliament, Joel Senyonyi, appealed to the youth not to relax but take the lead in the fight against HIV AIDS. Encouraging the men to step up and uh, join the fight against HIV and AIDS, which is very important. You know, in the 80s, after HIV and AIDS hit us so hard as a country, there were concerted efforts to fight the scourge. But after a while, people became complacent. There was not as much effort as it were. And so this clarion call by the Kabaka is a very important one. I also want to add my voice to say, let's keep ourselves safe because uh, we need to keep alive. On behalf of Airtel Uganda, the main sponsor of the Kavaka Run, the public relations manager David Bironji said, this year runners have increased and pledged continuous support. At Airtel we remain committed to supporting causes that reduce the burden of disease. Uh, HIV in sports, of course, is a conversation that has not been had. We believe that this sets a platform for it, for the conversation to start or even continue. Uh, as a big brand, we believe that when we make the investments in opportunities like this, uh, marathon, uh, national uh, teams, uh, air the rising stars, those conversations have to continue. The men who are listening to me out there, we cannot have air the rising stars or other sports activities when the young boys are not told about HIV AIDS. So the Kalungu West legislator Joseph Sewungu was among the runners and vowed to mobilize MPs to support allocation of more funds in the health sector. But the challenge is on us members of parliament. We sit, we enter parliament, speaker gives almost an hour for matters of national importance. We in Terego, the hospitals are down. In Kabongo, there are no hospitals. Then when we go for appropriation, they all shy away. Let us agree. 
that as members of parliament, we go under the Abuja declaration of 15%. The budget of health should be given 15% of the national budget and education. So that Kaye and Andrew Sebira, UBC News. Over 800 people have been tested for HIV and AIDS, syphilis and sickle cells by AIDS Information Center after thousands of people flocked to Lubiri in Mengo to participate in the 69th Kabaka's birthday run 2024, targeting ending HIV and AIDS in the year 2030. Various organizations, schools and individuals supported the rest and there was a call on Ugandans to get tested for HIV and AIDS. Thousands of participants joined the 69th Kabaka birthday run at the Lubiri Mengo Palace where Nalinya Agnes Nabaloga represented the king to officiate the occasion with different categories including 10, 20 and 5 kilometers respectively. <laughs> Unlike before, hundreds tested for HIV and AIDS, syphilis and sickle cell. Mukuvinde se wano kumanya anga bwenye miride. Msobole no kumanya okwe kuma. Ero msomongu funye buronji. Kavma Douglas, a lab technician at AIDS Information Center, thanked the organizers for mobilizing hundreds of thousands for testing to support the Kabaka cause. TV testing, syphilis testing, and we are also screening for sickle cell. So we thank the people who have turned up in big numbers. We thank AIDS, Uganda AIDS Commission and other partners who have showed up to offer services to the people. We urge the public not to only test for today, but also to continue testing and also to test with their partners. The Little Miss Uganda also encouraged parents to bring children to such events for there are lessons to learn. Today I'm here to celebrate the Kabaka's birthday. I am participating in the Kabaka's birthday run. The theme of the day is Stop AIDS. The Executive Director and Chief Operations Officer Iron M Bank, Sam Ntulume, thanked Kabaka Mutebi for spearheading the fight against HIV and AIDS. And on behalf of I and M Bank pledged to do their utmost to help the cause. Supporting this cause is very key for us as I and M Bank because we want to ensure that we have a healthy population because it's a healthy population that can do work and as a result of doing work we can all boost our economic uh, our economic well-being and ensure that uh, our country, our kingdom all flourish economically. So this is the overall objective of government and uh, when um, the kingdom comes together uh, calls upon Ugandans to that cause, it is very important. Now, us as Uganda Railways, uh, we, we believe that um, a healthy Ugandan is one who is able to add value to the growth of this country. So that is why we decided to come here and join Ugandans and join the kingdom in uh, this noble cause. Head of the Office of National Chairman of NRM Hajat Hadija Namialo participated in the Kabaka run to encourage youth to avoid HIV and AIDS. Namialo further urged men to spearhead the fight against AIDS through testing and being faithful to their partners. <laughs> And the medication said on all the jowls that John Jabo Miyaka Jona. His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Uganda, we've really had fun. Era to suvira anti siri magenda kuba guamu guanga. Jamel Sekaja filed this report. In more stories, the prevalence of HIV and AIDS, tuberculosis and other communicable diseases among the residents of Kimi Island in Kobe sub-county, Mukono district has become of concern. There's no functional hospital on the island. Patients travel two hours by boat to Kasenyi landing site to seek medical care from Entebbe Referral Hospital. Taso Uganda and now Humanitarian Development Agency with support from Time to Help organized a medical camp at Kimi Island to help the communities. Adopting good health practices among islanders can prevent the spread of infectious diseases. 
at Kimi Island in Kome Sub County, Mukono District, HIV and AIDS, tuberculosis, STDs, malaria, typhoid, and respiratory infections have become common among residents of the island. There is no functional hospital. Patients travel for two hours by a boat to reach Kasanyi Landing Site before proceeding to Entebbe Faro Hospital for medical care. Taso Uganda, a Nile Humanitarian Development Agency, with support from Time to Help, set up a medical camp at Kimi Island to offer essential health care services to over 400 people. There was HIV testing, among other services, and free treatment for those with communicable diseases. The medical coordinator at Taso Mulago, Dr. Fiona Mutesi, says that every three months there are routine visits to the island to provide health care services. We are here today for um, our first quarterly uh, camp to treat patients who are living with HIV and are not able to access their medication because of the nature of transport around to and from the island, but also to provide additional medical services such as TB and HIV, uh, sorry, TB uh, screening, diagnosis and treatment, treatment of sexually transmitted infections and all the other infections. Um, we found this place to be quite wanting of medical services and as TASO, uh, our vision is an empowered and healthy community. Now Humanitarian Development Agency and Time to Help supply drugs, laboratory kits and dental supplies to TASO for residents of Kimi Islands. The chairperson of LC1 Kimi Island, Abdul Karim Chigua, appealed to residents to value these regular medical checkups. <laughs> The program manager at Nile Humanitarian Development Agency, Kapere Hashim, said such support will improve access to healthcare in remote areas. Today we are here at Kimi Island, one of the islands on Lake Victoria. We are here purposely to conduct a medical camp. We are here to support the already existing government initiatives to extend health services to the people of Kimi Island and also to make our contribution to the global development agenda, goal number three of the sustainable development goals, which, which aims at promoting health and well-being. The medical camp at Kimi Island provided health care services, which are read to the residents where collaboration and community involvement will address health care challenges in remote areas. A man identified as Paul Weiswa has accused the secretary to the president's office and the minister for presidency for obstructing him from the post of deputy RDC for Luka, to which he was appointed by President Yoram Seveni. However, the secretary in the office of the president, Haj Yunusu Kakande, clarified about the matter, saying that there were two people with the same names until they analyzed and chose the authentic one. The Constitution of Uganda grants the president to elect representatives referred to as RDCs and deputies. So in 2022, when the list of appointed RDCs and deputies was released, Paul Weiswa's name was shortlisted to the post of deputy RDC in Luka. After receiving the news, a one Paul Weiswa in this video ran first to the presidential office to confirm his appointment and was given letters of confirmation. Called Weiswa Paul, he was appointed deputy RDC fully and duly. Uh, uh, that was on the 30th of March, uh, uh, the year 2022. Uh, I was given the appointment letter and the card by, by the office of the president. However, he accuses some people from the presidential office of blocking him from the position he was appointed by the president, replacing him with their own. Uh, uh, to my disappointment, I actually found out that the, the same office that was actually given to me had been occupied by someone else, uh, who actually found out to be in the same names like mine. You know what I mean? So after two months? I went back to her, she only chased me out of her office. Then too, uh, the, the, I mean, Secretary Officer of the President, by name of Hajin Kakande, my lawyers wrote to him, seeking for clarification on how best I could get justice. My record is very clear. I don't need anything. The two are coming from the same region. I don't come from Busoga. I come from Buganda. Therefore, there was no need of conniving with anybody. I think because of his disparity, 
he went into that business of thinking that I connived with the minister. There was no conniving. In response, the secretary to the office of the president, Had Yunus Kakande, has clarified the matter. The right person chosen by the president shared similar names. Just a matter of a mistake that the man will reign very fast and picked an appointment later which was not his. Then after he had taken, it actually didn't take us five days or two days or three days, just one day. As it was certain minutes time that when we, that's when my people realized that hey, the person who has taken this appointment later is not the person. The real person is this one. So they called him and said, can you give us our letter? And he surrendered it. His names are the same. As I've told you that we always have similar names. Names, even if they're similar, does not, they are, they are not the only the one, one, one parameter for identifying an individual. There are other parameters which identify the, an individual. Hajinus Kakande adds that there are systems followed in every appointment by the president. For him, for him when he gets the names, of course, this is a vetting system. Yeah, this is a vetting system. Otherwise, some people who are thieves may end up being appointed. Or who have cases, or who have been in charge in courts of law. But there's a system of vetting. That one is there. It's a vetting system. Now, that vetting system exactly knows who is who. That's what we consulted, and they don't know the real person is not that one. The right person is this. Paul Weiswa has threatened to sue Hajun Su, who says they did a thorough investigation. They, even, they have even been making uh, some, I mean, uh, mini reshuffles, but uh, my name has, been, uh, has never appeared anywhere. So I'm worried because they are sitting on my, my information. And you told him that you are free to go. I think that you are free to go to court. He shall find you there, and then just to prevail. The fight over the position comes at a time when Paul Waiswa Bwinibwamiko, who was confirmed as the deputy Aradis of Luka, is on suspension for misconduct. The right one, unfortunately, he also got a problem and he got hemorrhoid in, in, in fighting with a, a small man, a motorcycle rider, Boda Boda. And we have really, we have really taken action against him. There's no question about it. He's suspended. We are going to take him to the Rewards and Sanctions Committee. If they found him guilty, definitely will lose, he will lose his job. The 3rd Division Commander, Major General Don Williams Navasa, has called upon Kabong and Kotida district communities to form a strong alliance to fight insecurity caused by armed Chukana warriors from Kenya. Navasa was meeting security leaders from UPDF and the police local leaders reformed warriors AT Morititi sub-county in Kabong district with others from the two districts. Morinika reports. They pretend to be heading to Kenya. Kenya. They reach the escapement, they turn left and go to Kenya. Most district in North Karamoja of Kotido, Kabang, Karenga, and Abim had relative peace until last month when reports of animal thefts came. It is alleged the Trukana from Kenya and Rebojie and Dodoth from Karamoja are responsible. On 9th March this year, 32 heads of cattle were stolen from Kabong district. The UPDF soldiers followed but failed to recover animals. Leaders from Kabong and Kotido districts later discovered that the rebel warriors, who are still in the wilderness, intercepted stolen animals and took them away from the warriors. Instead of giving the animals back to the owners, the, the one the animals were raided from, they decided to keep them and I think kept on hitting them until the information reached the community. By two weeks' time, they had heard that it was only 11 cows which were left. The third division commander, Major General Don Williams Navasa, called for the security meeting ending security threats. The very routes you used when you were still a rider <laughs> are the ones which are being used by those who are still riding. Kindly, kindly, help us follow successfully for the terrain. But two, you know the tactics because you were riding. 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 All the routes. Number four, you know all the hideouts. In the meeting, participants decried limited deployment at the borderline 
living press borders between Uganda and Kenya. Criminals, the bad elements, the outcasts, the people who have refused to hand over the guns to government voluntarily. And the government is looking for them, but they have decided to go outside into the bushes. And they, these are the people who come and they steal animals in the, in the night. They come and raid. And, uh, and these people are not only in Kabong, but also they are in Kotido. And uh, we think... Speaking of those younger people, because if you go and look at the statistics, they go and steal 10 cows. They steal four cows. And you see in the discussion, they go and hide in the bush and begin slaughtering, selling. They eat some of it themselves. Uh, one of the things that has sparked conflict in Karamoja is the porous border between Uganda and Kenya, especially on the corridor between the GA and the Turkana, and the, 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 the Dodot and the Turkana. And as a result, it has allowed these people to enter to Karamoja with the guns. And Leaders and reformed warriors suggest possible solutions to insecurity. They should begin thinking that we are all Karamojong. And as Karamojong, we should not remain as Karamojong. We should consider ourselves as Ugandans. So that the spirit of Uganda, of unity and love for one another, comes in the heart of every Karamojong. My appeal to government is that they deploy at the border between Uganda and Kenya to block the Turkana from entering into Uganda. And then to provide the UPDF or security forces with water at the border point because that's one of the biggest challenge and now our security forces are having. There is no water at the border point. To identify, to identify those uh, crossing points and then we establish permanent detaches. Relatedly, Navasa called upon the GA and Dodoth communities to unite and fight the armed Turkana armed warriors. The Dodoth and the GA, if they have an alliance, <laughs> if any long elements attempt to, to conduct such a raid, the community leaders themselves will make recovery without even going for a fight. Nun Mukwaya, Maureen Iga, Karamoja. In more news, National Children Authority has trained local leaders in Jinja City on implementing child well-being and protection aimed at the implementation of child protection policy and programs. The training aims at eliminating violence against children, child neglect and child labour. National Children Authority Executive Director Martin Kiza says that the training breaks down the National Children Policy of 2020 to the local leaders. National Children Authority is training political and religious leaders on promoting child protection policy to eliminate child labor in Busoga region. Executive Director Martin Kiza said at least 2 million children in the country are trapped in child labor. When you look at current statistics, actually national statistics, more than 2 million children in the country are trapped in worst forms of child labor. So we are saying that really enough is enough. We must get measures that are very effective and implementable so that children are given that maximum protection, withdrawn from child labor, so that they are reintegrated back to schools and the communities and the families specifically. During the meeting, Martin Kiza urged them to embrace the use of the law against people who violate children's rights. Also noting that, as specifically now in Usoga sub-region, our findings indicate that about 45% of children in Usoga sub-region have failed to go to school. You know, they drop out of school to go and engage into work child labor so that they can uh, supplement, they can contribute to the income of their parents. Uh, but this is not good. That's, as National Children Authority, we are saying that children must be protected. There is no shortcut. And we are encouraging even parents that parents please, where children are of school going age, they must go to school. Remember, government put in place UPE the universal primary education, universal secondary education. These are free. So you parents out there must use, must take this opportunity to ensure that children go to school. 
Leaders from the southern and northern divisions of Ginger City were concerned over most parents neglecting their responsibilities. Sexual and environmental abuse, so many cases of rape and defilement and arise. Child neglect due to the high cost of living. Hence, most of the children in the Gapoda streets know that survive. Child labor, especially areas which were formerly in Ginger District, that's Budondo, where sugar cane growing is one of the major activities being carried out. Benon Mokwaya, Stephen Kayumba, UBC. Christians, especially those in the Catholic Church, are celebrating the Sunday of the Divine Mercy to continue emphasizing togetherness, forgiveness to give clear meaning of the Catholic Church. The chaplain of Seta Schools, Reverend Father Peter Antege, was leading the Thanksgiving service, which also coincided with celebrating the Son of Divine Mercy. As the Catholic Church celebrates the Sunday of Divine, Mercy Christians need to emphasize togetherness, forgiveness, and support the underprivileged in the society. The chaplain Seta Schools, Reverend Father Peter Antege, led a Thanksgiving Mass which coincided with celebrating the Divine Mass Sunday at Seta A level campus in Mukono. If the people are not working together, they might be like a machine that just grinds itself instead of grinding the input that has been given away to process it into the products that the owner wants. So we do acknowledge that your success which in the first place is the gift of God. The headmaster set a level campus Ramadan Tsonga says a lot have been achieved. It's timely to thank the Almighty. Our students, our alumni, that where they are going, they should have the reflection of the values that we've obtained from set high school. For us, we are sending them to universities to be our mirrors to be talking about set high school and then the actions must reflect their six years while in set high school. At set high Mbalala, Christians were encouraged to thank God for achievements and also to commend their political, religious leaders for the services of peace and development. The headmaster Boniface Sebukalu commended government for the new curriculum that offers hands-on training. No, we have to give thanks the Lord. He has been good to us and his mercies uh, uh, endure forever. That's why we celebrated all those achievements today and we said thank you to God. We are glad that today we had mass and uh, Reverend Father Semanda Martin from Massacre Diocese led us in the sacrifice of mass and it also coincided with a day of divine mercies. Uh, we want to thank God and we pray that uh, we make more exploits. The service at Green Campus, the service of celebrating the Divine Mass Sunday, the Mass was led by Reverend Father Gerald Sekanda of Lugas Diocese. <laughs> Master Paul Alibundi advised youth to embrace government program of skilling Uganda to fight poverty. I would say to any student in the face of discouragement, even when it is not people, even when it's life itself, even when it's family challenges, you have to know in the end, God speaks the last word and his word is joyful. As these students go out, uh, to my dear students, all of you, even the rest of the students that could have not been here in Seta High School, you are starting a new journey to your career. And in this, in this new journey, you need to embrace it with positivity. On this earth, be united with him in his homeland. 
Leaders in northern Uganda have welcomed the appointment of Dr. Kenneth Omona as the new minister for northern Uganda, replacing Grace Freedom Kwechini. Sam Ngolan General Charles Otema Awani implores the new minister to focus on investments that will impact the local people. <laughs> Senior Presidential Advisor Sam Mingola and Commander of the Reserve Force General Charles Otema Wanya have welcomed the appointment of Dr. Kenneth Omona, State Minister for Northern Uganda. So he must sit down with all the leaders of Laos sub region and they guide him. I have been exchanging with him a lot. What should be done? He is also on value addition. We should invest in the right factory, on the right thing. Homona replaces Grace Freedom Kweichin, who served in the portfolio from June 2016 until the recent reshuffle by His Excellency the President. Start talking about the compensation of the cows. My late uncle had over 300 cows. But he got only one million shilling on his account when they were compensating. Northern Uganda suffered a devastating civil conflict for over a decade. While progress has been made through different interventions, addressing poverty remains a critical concern in the region. Leaders want the new minister to put efforts in improving livelihoods, reduce vulnerability and sustain economic growth, mindset change notwithstanding. For instance, I wanted to see this spinning mill being revamped. The price of cotton has now gone high. I want to see the starch factory being revamped. We import starch was over 500 million US dollars every year, but we had a starch factory here. This is what our politicians should be advocating for. Teach the people how to make money. The four acres, the planting of the mangoes, the oranges, the chicken, the cows, and milk is the only solution. I have brought a system where I have given my tractor to dig for the people. They were speaking at the memorial service for former CA representative late Charles Christopher Olaid. Olaid passed on at 88 years in 2022. He had uh, a bus company, one of the few people to own buses in northern Uganda. Various businesses, estates, and, uh, and also encouraged many like the sum. We had a company called Beeline Transport Company. We started having a bus company with him, two of us, and we have a garage which is called Beeline. He introduced me to all the big companies. I was a distributor of almost all the goods in Lango here. Do you know about why it was a long, uh, long time? Otema warned the people of Lango against following old parties like UPC rallying people to NRM. Yes, people have memory <laughs> of the UPC then. But the world has evolved. So I don't think if Lango <laughs> will develop with UPC other than with NRM, I see the direction they're taking, they're going to get lost. UPC has won in both by elections held in Lango and threatened to sweep all parliamentary positions in Lango come 2026. UBC News. The Chabazinga of Busoga, His Royal Highness William Gawla IV, has praised Turkish government for its significant contributions to improving the lives of Ugandans through initiatives such as education infrastructure development, religious support, and healthcare services, among others. The Chabazinga expressed his gratitude during a special event held at Ginger Service College in Ginger City. There was a turnout of over 500 Muslims at Ginger Service College with the proceedings commencing with prayers led by Uganda's Muft, Sheikh Ramadan Mubaje. stakeholders <laughs> His Royal Highness William Gabula IV highlighted the transformative impact of various development projects spearheaded by the Turkish government in Uganda. He emphasized that the initiatives were a result of bilateral relations between Turkey and Uganda. <laughs> Mulalo, 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 Mulal
The first Deputy Prime Minister and Minister for East African Affairs, Rebecca Kadaga, noted that Turkey is a compassionate partner in Uganda's development journey. I want to thank you for Kamuli Community College. You built a laboratory for us. And I know the young people are going to benefit from that a lot. I know you've done a lot throughout the country. So really thank you so much, Your Excellency. I'm aware that tomorrow you are supporting the blind community in Lubu. Encho ambassador Lukuja Rubu, a charity rich about Rubu Vere. I look at the mysteries of Babusoga, Okuba to Adira, even to be a Turkish ambassador to Uganda, His Excellency Faith A.K. acknowledged the global challenges first, including terrorism and extremism. The spirit of uh, Ramadan can be best expressed in a single word sharing. This is what makes Ramadan a special time. Sharing is symbolized by coming together at iftar dinners with guests, relatives, neighbors, and friends. Sharing of God's gifts by rich and poor, young and old, men and women. The Chabazinga iftar dinner brought together a diverse Muslim community in Jinja. Now the health officer in charge of Bubare Health Center 3 and the district supervisor for Bubare Health Center subcount in Kashari South, Mbaya District Dr. Ruth Ampari has highlighted that yellow fever is a disease characterized by a yellowing of the skin and eyes typically occurring when the liver starts to fail. Dr. Mpaire shared this information while overseeing the yellow fever vaccination campaign at Kashaka Girls Secondary School in Kashaka, Mbarara. Against yellow fever is one of those febrile illnesses that end with the body turning yellow, just like its name. It's coined from the fact that when you suffer it, in the end, when you get into the intoxication phase, the liver fails and the body turns yellow. More than 1,000 students participated in this crucial vaccination drive. Dr. Ruth Ampire elaborated that certain groups, such as lactating mothers of babies under nine months, individuals on suppressive therapy, pregnant women, recent organ transplant recipients, and those with AIDS, are advised against receiving the vaccine. And who is not eligible for this vaccine? Those who are pregnant do not receive this vaccine. Those who are lactating babies that are less than nine months of age, those ones who are on immunosuppressive therapy, those ones who have received organs, organ transplant clients within the last two years, and those ones who are having AIDS. Aradisi Mbarara Emmanuel Katera Tuliava Jenyi emphasized that the health workers utilize various media platforms, including print and electronic media, as well as public gatherings to disseminate vaccination messages to disseminate vaccination messages with support from local political leaders. Therefore, we are using this period as we vaccinate, we sensitize. We are using both media, the radio and print to make sure that this message reaches our people, including churches. Mrs. Ingabirano Zipora Muhanguzi, the deputy head teacher of Kashaka Girls Secondary School, welcomed the health team from Barara Health Office. They gave education and vaccination to everyone who needed it. We received it well because already she had come and sensitized all of us. And so we were ready for it. I thank the government who, which has put this initiative into plan. I also thank our administration, Kashaka Girls, for allowing us to participate in this vaccination. <laughs> My boss, CEO Inojo, the general of generals, the conqueror of conquerors, the first and the final, the sky above the skies, the promised land, the terms and the conditions, the international king crocodile, the source of the source What's of the Nile. I don't have money today. Just a polite loan of 200k to stock my shop. 
the signs and symptoms of success. The banker commander, not the banker teller. Why hassle for a loan when you've got MTN Momo? We're so tingy. Use the Momo app or dial star 165 star 5 hash for all quick loans. Choose from the different loan options from our partners and get one that works for you. Together, we're unstoppable. The government of Uganda and the Uganda Bureau of Statistics is calling upon all stakeholders such as the chief administrative officers, city mayors, resident city commissioners, city clerks, city and division councillors, wards and LC chairpersons as well as the residents and business communities to cooperate with the UBOS field teams as we embark on advanced preparations to conduct the national population and housing census on the 10th of May 2024. The census will be at 10-day exercise to obtain statistical data and information that will be used for planning and policy formulation including information on 1 how many we are 2 where we are 3 how we are living 4 what we own and 5 where we access services from the Uganda Bureau of Statistics has now started listing of households and mapping in the 11 cities of Arua, Fort Porto, Gulu, Hoima, Jinja, Lira, Mbale, Masaka, Mbarara, Soroti, and in the Greater Kampala comprising of Kampala, Wakiso, and Mukono districts. For more information, please call 0755-342-128 or 0773-342-128. This message is brought to you by the Executive Director and Census Commissioner, Uganda Bureau of Statistics. Census 2024. It matters to be counted. Are you planning or in the process of traveling abroad for work? Using irregular channels to find and travel for work abroad often seems cheaper and faster, but you risk being trafficked, mistreated, or forced to do work you did not agree to. Using proper channels is safer, offers more protection, and better access to support services when problems arise. Do not be deceived. Choose the proper channels. Always verify all information before traveling abroad for work by contacting the Ministry of Gender, Labor and Social Development, your local district labor office or DSOS office. You can also visit EEMIS website on eemis.mglsd.go.ug. This message is brought to you by the International Labor Organization with support from the Government of Switzerland. Welcome back from that short commercial break. Secondary schools are adhering to the vision of 2040, which aims to transform Uganda from a predominantly, from a predominantly peasant and low-income country to a competitive upper-middle-income status country. Now, Mountain St. Mary's College Namagunga has organized an annual science fair for students to showcase technologies and innovations in science and arts subjects. Science, technology, engineering, mathematics, and humanities for sustainable growth and economic development was the theme for annual science fair organized by St. Mary's College, Namagunga. The students showcased their innovations that can be adopted to benefit the local communities. So our project is going to create awareness to people living around mountains. We want to make them aware that anytime they should be prepared, at a point they are going to... At a point, eruption can occur, especially those places with dormant volcanoes in Uganda. In Uganda, we have a dormant volcano called Mount Mufumbiro, so this would be suitable, this part would be suitable for people around Mount, Mount Mufumbiro. We would tell them that there are signs of, there are signs that a volcanic er eruption is going to happen. That is, there is emission of gases, there is smoke, there are earthquakes. So when people see that, they can actually go away or relocate or ever as the government is telling them. In schools just like this one, Mount St. Mary's College Namagunga, they teach us ICT involving different coding languages, CSS, HTML, JavaScript and the rest. But in the outside world, it's more relevant in that the world is moving digital and it's becoming technology. Without technology, you can't do anything. And therefore, learning this is going to help us in the future. We've heard of things like AI, AR, which are taking over the world. And therefore, when we learn these things here in school, they help us outside by enabling us to be able to control these applications, 
these interfaces so that we in the future can be controlling them instead of them controlling us. They enable us to simplify work in our different organizations and they also enable us to simplify our lives in our daily runnings. During the Science and Humanities Fair, teaching and learning Swahili language was also emphasized for Ugandans to tap into various opportunities beyond Uganda. Um, my name is Tibaga Tracy Davin. I'm in S3C, Mount St. Mary's College, Namagunga. So before you is the Kiswahili project. Our Kiswahili project, it's called the Rebirth of Kiswahili. So as the Kiswahili Club of Mount St. Mary's College, Namagunga, we have decided to take up this, op this responsibility to mother Kiswahili, to stimulate it and to try and bring it into people's hearts. Because we have a common phase saying Kiswahili was born in Tanzania, it grew up in Kenya and died in Uganda. Meaning, we all know how Kiswahili came about by the intermarriages of the Arabs and the Bantu, yes. And then when it reached Kenya, it got diluted. That's why at some point we say, I grew up in Kenya, me being Kiswahili, and I learned a lot of things with that. But then when Kiswahili reached Uganda, mainly in the heart of Uganda, we completely lost it. So we as the Kiswahili Club have taken this initiative starting small, starting from our school community. And we have taken this advantage of today being a science fair. Our parents are here, our beloved guests. We are having these bracelets with Kiswahili, with Kiswahili words on them. Um, you have a bracelet with a Kiswahili word on it and you'll be pushed to know what that word means, which will help you because you are going to start small. This fair, as the theme goes, humanities and science for innovation and development. And I think it is all about development because the country is developing and we want our girls to be involved in this development process. That's why we organized this fair and we also wanted the parents to come and see their daughters showcase what they give, as we call it, value for money. Uh, we are encouraging the girls to do the sciences. Of course, we don't force them because there are others who are not interested, but there are very few. But the many who are interested, we encourage them, we help them, and they are doing very well. Sila miyo kusaya bana masomero Tebite kwa kuka rubiliza na katono Eno kusimba nyiriri mpamfu Kino kalipa kano kabiduka Sima ya kuzunga na banka silipsi Kati osomuro kusasula school fees zomu ana wo Ateno okola na ebila lantoko Kusimu ye yomu ngalo Ichukula changu nyo Nyiga wanyizi sita Emu mwakaga tanu Sita munana not hash Huko berele wikula giridua Huboku zise apu ya MTN momo Hati kati okula churu waliru MTN Mobile Money Uganda Limited Erunga Miswa Bank and Kuruya Uganda After the massive launch of the Musevena Woma hip song in Kololo, Mukono, Nabweru Wakiso District and Masuli Ta War Zone Munamasa Kansereko Emma takes Musevena Woma to Mitiana On Friday, the 26th of April 2024 at Mitiana Sazel Ground We shall start with Bulonji Wansi, a health camp and then a boom of entertainment with thousands of comedians and artists all at a free entry Auntie Jaja Gabude, His Excellency Yoweri Kaguta Museveni will be our chief guest. Come, let's have fun with Jaja. Don't miss.
Lastly, in our sports story, City Oilers, Uganda's basketball powerhouse is off to the 2024 Basketball Africa League group phase campaign in Cairo, Egypt. The team, comprising of seasoned players and prominent talent, promising talent, is set to face stiff competition in one of Africa's most prestigious club tournament due April 19th. A mix of experience and rising stars in the squad includes six players hailing from the National Basketball League in Tony Drib Leba, Fayid Bale, James Okello, Titus Luwal, Ivan Muhwezi, and the promising youngster Alawi Senkubuge, who left on Saturday morning. The, others re the other returning players include Dane Miller, Robinson Opong, and Brandon Seburumbi, who represented the team in the Elite 16 in South Africa last year in depth and experience to the squad. Sixth, City Oilers are poised to tackle opponents such as Al Ahail from Egypt, Al Ahil Benghazi of Libya and Bangui Basketball Club from Central African Republic. Uh, you named uh, your team today. Uh, that is... Uh That's all we had for you tonight. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Sharon Chomdishai with Miguelu Muhammad and Sign Language. From the team and I, have a lovely night and a blessed week ahead of you. Bye-bye. UBC Inspiring Uganda.